My sister-in-law, 27 female, got married two days ago. So, backstory. Me and wife, 32 female, are lesbians. And when I tell you the amount of nonsense that came from my sister-in-law's mouth during our relationship was bad. Like, she mentioned multiple times how her sister was better off with her abusive husband and how I was corrupting her and my stepkids. We both had given her the benefit of the doubt at first because, well, she was 22 at the time and quite sheltered by her parents. But God, what happened at her wedding was a crap show. So me and my dear future wife wanted to get married in April and most of the prep was done, including my dress. I never had much growing up and grew up in an orphanage. So getting married to a woman in public was honestly a huge step for me. And it was like proving to everyone who told me I would die alone that I was finally happy and gay. This wedding was a big deal for my fiance as well, because the only wedding she had was when she was 22 with her abusive ex. The dress wasn't white, it was a dark blue with gold, and God, it was the best thing ever. It had gold flowers and crap, and was my cottage core dream. I got so much crap from my in-laws about it not being white, and some other things I forget. Most of my in-laws were borderline homophobic, really. Well, the time of the wedding comes. It's all good. My future wife looks hot in her suit. All goes according to plan. When the bride comes out in my dress, the exact ducking dress, I felt lightheaded and felt like I could vomit. My future wife never saw the dress, so she didn't know. But as soon as I rushed outside after the bride reached the altar, my stepdaughters must have told her because without a second thought, we were in the car and home. She had a breakdown as soon as she got home and she kept saying sorry and that it was her fault. It was awful, so awful. I cried, she cried, and long story short, we both got fever. Well, last night her sister called and damn, she was screaming how we made a mockery of her and everyone was more focused on us than her $90,000 wedding and other crap. She then called us F and how she copied my dress because she knew that what we would be doing was not a wedding because we are F, I guess. So she took it and said that I would look like a fat P in it anyway and some other stuff about us F ruining the wedding and crap like that. Me and future wife were sponsoring her honeymoon, which we took back, was a trip to Italy and Greece, all funded by us. Mind you, we were sick and became sick as hell that we had to send the girls over to our friend's house so they won't be affected. Well, my mother-in-law called too and said how we should not have left like that and how I turned her daughter into a selfish homosexual and that my wife had no right to take back the honeymoon money. So I feel guilty as hell now and most of their comments hurt a lot and like it's spiking my anxiety and other issues a lot. So am I the a-hole? The revenge here is already yours. 1. Every time she looks at her wedding pics, she will see that dress and remember what she did and why, and that she gave up in terms of her own day in order to make it about you. 2. And every time she shows those pics to anyone, they will ask, why not white? And she will have to explain and show her bigotry or lie. 3. Honeymoon money. Wear the dress if you want or get a new one and laugh all the way to the vows. Either way. My parents have two mortgages. One is theirs in a different city where they live with my multiple younger siblings, four tweens and teenagers. The other mortgage is for my house where my name and theirs is on the title. My parents bought me a car when I was in high school and paid it off years ago when I started university. The vehicle is owned by them but it is registered and insured under my name. I pay all insurance, maintenance fees, and gas for the vehicle. I also pay for all of the expenses such as utility bills, mortgage, insurance, security, etc. associated with my house, owned by me and my parents. I live with and share expenses with my partner. We both recently graduated and just got jobs a few months ago. We both have student loans. Unfortunately, I was temporarily laid off due to COVID-19. My partner works from home, but finances are obviously tight. My parents generally are bad with money. Despite being in the midst of a pandemic, 
They upgraded one of their cars and have bought new house furniture. They also have to pay $30,000 worth of home repairs. I have lent money to them in the past, and they have not paid me back, though these amounts were only hundreds to $1,000. Nowhere near as much as they were asking for now. They have asked me to lend them $5,000 before to help pay the $30,000 for their home repairs, but I declined since at that time I was still looking for a job. My parents randomly approached me and my partner and asked us to take out a $20,000 loan in my name. I asked why. They explained that they are refinancing their house and need to show the lender that they have an unencumbered $20,000. They say that the loan would be in my name, however they would be the ones paying it back, and there would be no risk to me, since they would be able to pay off the loan by January 2021 by paying in monthly installments. I immediately declined. I stated that I was not working and did not feel comfortable taking out a loan. Not only this, but I stated that in my current position, I likely wouldn't be approved. My parents pointed me to the loaner that would allegedly lend me money despite my unemployment for my credit score alone. My credit score is average at best. I checked out the loaner's website, which boasted same-day loans up to $50,000. Interest rates were somewhere around the 30% range. I restated my refusal. My parents started to get angry. They continued to say that there was no risk to me, that they would be able to pay it off. They were furious that I doubted that they would be able to pay the loan for me and said, do you think we would screw over family? They have also said that I don't understand how mortgages work and told me to go take a Finance 1000 course and educate myself to change my poor perspective. They also told me to go smoke and calm down. They know I regularly use medicinal M. It is legal where I live. I cited their other expenses and debts. There are even more than what I listed previously, and generally continue to say that due to the current state of the economy, it wasn't unreasonable for me to be cautious in trusting anyone to pay off a loan in my name. They continued to get angry and defensive, saying that I was disrespecting them for all they had done for me, and that this was the ultimate betrayal. I said that I did not want to be accountable for paying back this loan in the extremely likely event that they would not be able to pay for it. They decided to switch gears. They started saying that since they owned my vehicle and that they needed me to pay them $20,000, the vehicle is seven years old. I don't know that it would even be worth this much. I rely on my vehicle for transportation. My job involves being able to travel to different locations outside of city limits. And obviously, I can't afford to buy a new one. They ignored my position and proceeded to draft a contract which said I would agree to pay them $25,000 for the car, mysteriously larger than the initial amount they requested of me. Again, I refused to sign. I stated that I was paying all expenses associated with the vehicle, that it was a teenaged gift to me, and that I would be happy to buy it off of them once I was working again. Throughout the day, I also received several emails from loan matching and credit checking websites that they had applied me to. I confronted them about this and they said, we thought you would cooperate with us. They are now threatening to kick me out of the house and take my car. I am legally on title for the mortgage, so I am fairly certain they can't throw me out. But I am still very afraid of my parents showing up at my house and wrecking havoc. Not only this, but they continue to harass my partner in an attempt to guilt trip us and educate us on how we are wrong, how we are disrespectful, and how they will seize my car and force us to find new accommodations. The craziest part, my younger sibling, 22, who was working full-time already, agreed to apply for a loan on the first day they asked me and was in the process of getting approved the entire time they were harassing me. This has been going on for several days now. I have had to freeze my credit, change all my passwords, and now I am going to have to figure out how to buy my parents out of my mortgage. I told them that once I was working again and able to figure things out, I would buy my car from them and transfer titles on everything. My parents are still sending messages and emails to my partner and I, saying how terrible we are for not trying to help them and restating how much they have done for us. My parents went as far as to break down their total investment in me. From times they've helped me pay rent in the past to groceries they've bought me. 
They keep trying to corner me into agreeing to pay back their full investment in me. They've sent me messages saying, this will not be on your terms, and outlining a payment agreement for my car starting this month at around $450 a month plus 5% interest until I am able to pay the rest in full once my employment resumes. I am not sure if I am in the wrong here, and I do not know how to proceed. I don't even know what I am asking for in terms of advice, but any insight would be great. You are not in the wrong here. Your parents sound financially abusive. You had the right idea to freeze your credit and change passwords. I would also pull a credit report to see if anyone has taken a loan in your name. I would also counsel your younger sibling to not take out a loan for your parents. Like, what the hell? Also, your parents are trying to commit fraud. We have been married for 11 years and have three young children. No huge issues up until this point. I consider him a great partner, works hard, as do I, and we are happy together. In January, our neighbors got an au pair from Ireland. She was a hot topic when she came because she's stunningly beautiful. Their house directly faces ours, so we seen her often and joke together that the wife must be sleeping with her eyes open. These neighbors both work, like ourselves, but my parents are retired and care for our children. This couple's au pair basically tends to the children's needs during the working day, driving them to school and extracurricular activities. Our kids attend the same school. Like everybody else, my husband ogled her at the beginning, which was not cause for concern. I'm telling you, if I could insert a picture of this girl without exposing him and myself, I would. Our other neighbors even made comments to us about her. Complimentary, of course. However, as the months have passed, I have noticed my husband becoming obsessed with her. It started with the staring out the window, waiting to catch a glimpse of her. His chair he sits on whilst watching TV was positioned in our living area towards the back of the house, nearer our backyard area. He moved the chair to the front of the house to have a clear view of neighbor's house. I confronted him because it was that damn obvious, but he claimed that it's coming into spring and the sun comes in that side better. Huh, really? Eleven years later and you decide this? But whatever. He wants to check out Irish au pair model. I suppose if the shoe was on the other foot, I would do the same. The next cause for concern was when he decided he wants to take my daughter to her swimming lessons on Saturday morning that he never once was interested in before. And yeah, you guessed it, au pair takes the neighbor's twin girls to the same class. I again confront him on his true intention, and he scoffs at me. I drop it, but I'm on high alert. He returns home from swimming and is gushing about au pair. I mean gushing, like a teenager. He finds out her name and is telling me and my sister about her life back in Ireland and how great of a girl she is. My sister couldn't even hide her dismay. I again confronted him, but he brushed it off and said he never took me for the insecure type and she's 10 years his junior. She's just a nice girl. Fast forward to this morning. I am on our computer working from home. I don't have a Facebook profile, but I check his messages in a moment of weakness. Nothing relief momentarily i go into the history to retrieve the page i was on before the facebook snoop and my heart sinks he has been searching this girl on facebook daily for weeks probably over a month every single evening and sometimes multiple times a day i'm concerned about this and find it quite frankly disturbing i can't help but feeling he is m to her profile judging by the times in which he is searching her and that is only from our desktop. I dread to think of how often he searches her on his phone. I wouldn't consider myself insecure. However, for the first time in my marriage, I feel like, if given the chance, he would cheat. How do I go forward from here? This is unacceptable on multiple levels. Not only is it disrespectful to you and painful for you to witness, the au pair would likely be freaked out if she found out about it. I would not feel comfortable living next door to a guy who constantly searches my name online and rearranges his furniture to try to get a look at me. You need to get both of you, especially him, to counseling. My husband and I are having our first baby. My family is thrilled, 
but when we announced it to my husband's parents, their reactions were muted to say the least. I was very surprised by this, as I have known them and considered them close family for 10 years. They didn't get up from the couch or hug us at all. After a few initial questions, my mother-in-law announced that sister-in-law is going to be really upset about this. Some backstory. My husband's sister has been married for four years, and she and her husband have been unable to get pregnant. Unbeknownst to myself or my husband, my sister-in-law has started seeing a fertility specialist the past few months. I think this is wonderful news, as I know she wants children very badly, and I wish her nothing but good things. However, I was very upset that our moment of joy had cold water thrown on it. I felt almost guilty for getting pregnant. My mother-in-law quickly told us not to tell sister-in-law ourselves and that she'd handle it. A couple weeks later was Easter, and when we arrived for lunch, we were told that sister-in-law and husband weren't coming. I asked if they were going to brother-in-law's family instead. My mother-in-law said she was just going to be honest and tell me that sister-in-law just couldn't bear to see me and didn't want to come ruin Easter by crying the whole time. I got so mad and walked to the bathroom to cry. My husband said I was rude and to calm down, but I felt like my sister-in-law, like in all past family events, is making the situation about her. It feels like we're not allowed to be overtly happy. We ended up leaving so I could cry in a parking lot for 30 minutes. I felt embarrassed, but my husband was sympathetic and understood that it's been hard to control my emotions during the pregnancy. I just couldn't suppress it and had to cry out. My mother-in-law apologized for upsetting me and said she loved me. We returned to lunch and pretended nothing happened, and they didn't bring up sister-in-law again. I brought it up to my husband how unhappy I am with his family recently, and he was caught completely by surprise. He thought I was over it. His sister has still not even texted him to congratulate him, and his family has not reached out to us in support the way I thought they would. Am I the a-hole for choosing to be mad about this? I don't want to fight with his family, but I feel very alone in my feelings. My family lives three hours away. So with everything going on, I had been planning to rely on my mother-in-law for support and comfort. But it feels like she's choosing her daughter's feelings over mine. I'm not saying I don't understand why she's concerned for her daughter, but I'm feeling very neglected. Not the a-hole. My guess is your sister-in-law is the golden child. I say this because your mother-in-law's immediate response to your pregnancy announcement was concern about sister-in-law not congratulations for the two of you, and then concern about sister-in-law. Also, fair warning that you can't trust your mother-in-law. The whole let me tell sister-in-law, and then sister-in-law and brother-in-law not being present at the holiday get-together. Sounds like mother-in-law is probably stirring up drama with sister-in-law, and very possibly setting you up as a bad guy in the process. My advice, to the best of your ability, ignore any drama with the in-laws. Don't try to make them your friends because it will never happen. Don't trust anything your mother-in-law says. Instead, pay attention to her actions and take a big step back on the communication front with them. Decrease how much hurt they can cause you. If you're friends on social media, consider unfollowing their feeds and change your settings so they don't automatically see your posts. Don't reach out to them to discuss the details of your life. They are your relatives by marriage, but not your friends. Adopt a more relaxed and casual relationship so they can't cause you as much pain. 